so very good morning once again to so we are moving on to the lecture number 2 so in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss about the science of air condition so we will the title i included as per the syllabus as per the course plan uh, you will be learning about the uh, definitions of dry wet and dew point temperatures specific humidity and relative humidity in this lecture so let's uh, start by yeah so the uh, we already discussed about the refrigeration so what was the refrigeration the refrigeration was maintaining the system at a temperature below the temperature of the surroundings yeah we need a um, low temperature that was one of the objective in the case of refrigeration maintaining a system at a temperature below the temperature of the surroundings where as in the case of air conditioning what we need to maintain it deals with i mean the air conditioning or the science of air conditioning deals with supplying and maintaining internal atmospheric conditions irrespective of the external conditions supplying and maintaining internal atmospheric conditions irrespective of the external conditions so it requires lot of um, processes it includes uh, it involves a simultaneous control of air purity air motion temperature and humidity of air you need to control all this stuff like air purity air motion the temperature humidity so a simultaneous control of all these factors ensure the comfort internal atmospheric conditions irrespective of the external conditions in the air conditioning applications can be classified into mainly two types one is comfort air conditioning and the second one is industrial air conditioning so any air conditioning application having the primary intention is human health is called the comfort air conditioning so the primary intention of the air conditioning is for the human comfort we will call it as comfort air conditioning okay that is what you can see the in in your homes in offices many places where the human comfort is a prime objective so any air conditioning which is not primarily meant for human comfort is called industrial air conditioning so if you take the comfort air conditioning or the industrial air conditioning the equipments or the refrigerating system or in words the equipment that process involved in both type of air conditioning is the same yeah the difference what then what is the difference is the inside conditions required the required inside conditions this both this air conditioning are preferred in terms of the inside conditions now when you are going to discuss about the different parameters associated with air conditioning uh, we must learn about what you understand by what we mean by psychrometry so the psychrometry is nothing but it's a, a branch of science which deals with the properties of moist air yeah this branch this is called the psychrometry so the subject which deals with the properties of moist air is known as psychrometry the properties of moist air are called psychrometric properties so we are going to discuss about uh, the different uh, special terms used in the study of uh, psychrometry let's learn one by one the first one would be the dry air let's see what uh, when we are going to uh, define these terms anywhere in the subject you understand what does it mean 
So we are going to describe each one now. So the dry air means it's a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, argon, neon, helium, etc. So all these constituents are involved as traces with oxygen and nitrogen as its major constituents. So the, uh, it's a mixture of with oxygen and nitrogen are as its major constituents. It also consists of small <coughs> composition of oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, argon, neon, helium, etc. So it then we call it <coughs> as a dry air. And the next one would be the moist air. What do you mean by moist air? So it's nothing but it's ordinary atmospheric air. It's a mixture of dry air plus water vapor. So, it, so that's a moist air. Mixture of dry air and water vapor. Then what do you mean by a saturated air? So it is an air which contains maximum amount of water vapor. Which the air can hold at a given temperature and pressure. So the air which contains maximum amount of water vapor at a given temperature and pressure. It's called the saturated air, which means the saturated air contains the maximum amount of water vapor. It is saturated by the presence of water vapor. So it's called a saturated air. Now, the specific or absolute humidity or humidity ratio, you can see that some of the terms are I, we have given a different color, nothing but because this type of, um, you know, these are some of the repeatedly asked questions in previous university questions. That's why I um, highlight with a special color. Let's see what do you mean by a specific or absolute humidity or humidity ratio. Maybe it may be sometimes ask what do you understand by humidity ratio. It's nothing but it's a ratio of mass of water vapor to the mass of dry air in a given volume of moist air. If you take a particular volume of moist air, the humidity ratio represents the ratio of mass of water vapor to the mass of dry air. How much water vapor is present in uh, or the ratio of mass of water vapor to the mass of dry air in a given volume of moist air? Yes, of course, the moist air contains both water vapor and dry air. So it's a ratio of mass of water vapor to the mass of dry air in a given volume of moist air. So that's called the specific or absolute humidity or humidity ratio. Next one would be relative humidity. This is also how been asked many times in many exams. Um, it's nothing but the mass of water vapor in a given volume of moist air at a given temperature to the mass of water vapor contained in the same volume of moist air at same temperature when the air is saturated. So the first one would be the mass of water vapor in a given volume of moist air and to the mass of water vapor in a saturated air. Yeah, I can tell like that. Saturated air means uh, the air which contains maximum water vapor. So that's a ratio is called the relative humidity. The mass of water vapor in a given volume of moist air to the mass of water vapor contained in the same volume of moist air when the air is saturated. The first in the ratio numerator and denominator, the first one would be it is not saturated, this in to the saturated air. So mass of water vapor in a given volume of moist air at a given temperature. The mass of water vapor contained in the same volume of moist air at the same temperature when the air is saturated. Then let's see what do you mean by a dry bulb temperature or DBT. Sometimes uh, the short form will be asked and you will be asked to describe it. The temperature of the air measured by an ordinary thermometer is called the DBT or dry bulb temperature. Next one would be the wet bulb temperature. What do you understand by a wet bulb temperature? The temperature recorded by a thermometer when its bulb is covered by a wet cloth and is exposed to a current of moving air. So I shall um, share with you some of the uh, animation videos there you will get a better clarity. What do you mean by a psychrometer and what do you mean by DBT and WBT? So it's self learnable. So the wet bulb temperature is the temperature recorded by a thermometer when its bulb is covered by a wet cloth and is exposed to the current of moving air. 
So the, now you learned what do you mean by dBT and what do you mean by WBT. So the difference between these two, the difference between the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature is called wet bulb depression. And it depends on the light humidity of the air. Wet bulb depression depends on the arch value of air. The next one would be the dew point temperature. The temperature at which the condensation of moisture begins. You know what is meant by condensation, isn't it? The vapor to liquid. Yeah, the temperature at which the uh, condensation of moisture begins when the air is cooled at a constant pressure. That's called the dew point temperature. The temperature at which the condensation begins. Condensation of moisture begins when the air is cooled at constant pressure. Now, as uh, in the case uh, what we discussed previously, the difference between WBT and dew point temperature is called dew point depression. The difference between dBT and WBT is called the wet bulb depression. Similarly, the difference between the dry bulb temperature and dew point temperature is called the dew point depression. Now, what do you mean by a sensible heat of air? What do you mean by sensible heat of air? The enthalpy of dry air which can be calculated by measuring its dry bulb temperature. By using the dBT value, you will be able to find out the enthalpy of dry air, which is called the sensible heat of air. So, you have must connect this two. When you hear about the sensible heat, it is nothing but the enthalpy of dry air, which can be calculated by measuring the dBT value. What is mean by total heat? The total heat of moist air is the sum of sensible heat of dry air plus and sensible plus latent heat of water vapor present in it. So the total heat of moist air, the total heat of air means the total heat of moist air is the sum of sensible heat of dry air and the sensible plus latent heat of water vapor present in it. Thank you.